All right, a question I get asked a lot is, what kind of strings do you have on your guitars? Uh, first of all, strings on my guitars or strings on the customer's guitars? Because there's two different things. On customer's guitars, I'm going to put Diddario EJ17, which I buy in the bulk set um, because I'm a Diddario dealer, so I get dealer, dealer prices on these things. And so there's I use the EJ-17s, unless it's a small body, in which case it's going to get EJ-16s. Um, yeah, they're just standard strings. Every guy's got his favorite strings, the strings that he swears are the best strings in the world. I did a string test for Flat Picking Guitar Magazine, you know, 20 years ago, where I reviewed a ton of strings and... EJ-17s were the standard. I compared everything against those. Um, I compared them fresh, and then I ran them for a week so I could see what, how they sounded when they were older and when they were fresh. Sure, anyway, EJ-17s are the standard. Let me tell you a couple of stories, though. <laughs> uh, for one thing, I used Martin strings for a long time. The SP-4200s, whatever they are. The SPs um, and medium-gauge phosphor bronze. I just get whatever is the cheapest. And the reason I do that is because a couple times I have put strings on customer's guitar that I thought were, you know, and I'd get an email from them and say, oh, I can't wait to get it back and put my favorite strings on. And I thought, well, why did I spend all the money on, before, you know, before I had a dealer uh, pricing, why did I spend all the money on these good quality strings if you're just going to, Take them off and put your favorite strings, whatever they happen to be, you know. Okay, that's right. I just quit putting fancy strings on there. Second story was, right after that, I started looking for strings. to see what's the cheapest string out there that I can buy uh, before I understood that I could get dealer pricing on stuff if I asked politely. <clears throat> and I found Darko's. Darko was made by Martin, where they were sold by Martin. They were, I don't know if they were made by Martin. You know, there's only so many string manufacturers, but they were Mexican string, if I recall. They were cheap, you know, they were like $2.50 a set. And I'd buy them by the two or three dozen sets, and I'd put them on the customer's guitars and ship them home. I can't tell you how many times people would email me and say, what kind of strings are these? I love these strings. <laughs> And they're Darko's. They're the cheapest strings I could get to, you know, to put on your guitar so that you wouldn't throw away good quality strings. So those kind of things just made me really question <laughs> strings, you know. Uh, I've done another test, or not a test, I've done a review. I put nickel bronze and 8020s um, on two different guitars. The same, the same, each guitar wore both sets of strings, okay? So I had a Collings and then I had a Martin. So I had a Martin sound and I had the bright Collings sound. And I really wanted to see what the nickel bronze would sound like because they tend to warm up a guitar. Um, anyway, that's on the YouTube channel. Go look for 8020 versus nickel bronze. And that was interesting. Okay, so customers' guitars, now that I'm a Diodario dealer pricing guy um, and I can't get bulk Martin strings anymore, I use Diodario. EJ 17s and I put them in there and I don't worry about it. Send them off, okay? It's a good standard string. Me personally, I use um, Elixir, Nano Web, Phosphor Bronze, and I do a special deal here where I buy the HD set, <clears throat> which is, let me get it out here. Here it is. HD set. And the gauges on this are 13, 17, 25, 32, 42, and 53. So what you can see is it's got light wound strings and medium gauge unwound strings. I take the 53 and I replace it with a wound 56. So now what I have is what is my favorite gauge of strings, which is kind of which is a true medium gauge set and i used to use this in ghs ghs has a set tm335 and they call it the true medium set and it's this gauge and what it results in is an even balance um, or even tension of the strings 
If you look at the tensions on the standard set of medium gauge or light gauge strings, you will see that the A and the D have proportionally higher tension than all the other strings. And then the B string is really left out in the cold. Um, it's a much lower tension. So I started using the uh, GHS TM335 for a long, long time. And they have a real balanced feel to them. And I just really like them. Because you have a medium gauge on the on the low E and you have mediums on the trebles, you still get the the, the big rhythm sound. Nobody ever once ever ever said to me, "Are those light gauge strings you're using?" You know, no, because the mediums are on the bottom and on the top, and they sound like medium gauge strings are easier in your fingers. Then, um, when the nano webs came out, I didn't like poly webs. Um, they were too, too coated. But I started using nano webs and I really, really like them because they're really easy on my fingers. They don't rip my fingers up. They don't rip the calluses up and they don't squeak. Um, God, they last forever. And I'm not kidding you that I have to write down the date when I change the strings and put it in the case. And I have some strings that have been on there for two years because I don't play that guitar, you know, that. Um, I have so many customers' guitars here that I don't play my personal guitars all that much. And so they sit in the case. And then when you pull them out, the nano webs are bright and crisp and ready to go. And some of them have been there for two years on the guitar. And I've, you know, I've even gigged on those. When when they start getting dense in them, especially in the G string, then they're, you know, they're due for a change because they're not holding tune. But my fingering has gotten so much, much lighter um, playing electric guitar and mandolin and other things and just getting better setups where I didn't have to try so hard. My fingering has gotten so light now that I hardly even put dents in the strings. And so I personally use Lixionana webs in my custom set right there, which again is a 13, 17, 25, 32, 42, and 56. All right, so if you don't like Lixionana webs and you don't like coded strings and you have a rabbit objection to coated strings and you want to try that gauge that I'm using uh, which is really really good on um, light built guitars like the authentics and custom lights and especially OEMs things like that you know I run that on my Prus OMDs which are not really OEMs but the small body guitars you know um, <clears throat> if you want to try a gauge that's like that gauge but not coated did a EJ24 EJ24, GHS TM335 is a good one, and John Pierce makes one that I think they call new mediums, and I think they sell them as a slack key tuning, but it's the same gauge. Um, so a lot of the slack, tuning, slack key tunings, uh, you're going to drop the low E down to a D, and you're going to drop the high E down to a D, and then so you're going to have light gauge in the middle, and you know, you're going to have the same tension on there. But uh, John Pierce does make a set. And again, I think it's called a true, a, a new medium, something like that. But if you dig around, you'll find it. So those three companies make them. Um, and then it's real easy to get the Elixir set like that. You buy the HD set and then you buy this extra 056 and you throw that on there. And if strings are going to last you two years. It's no big deal. <laughs> you know, I probably had these. In the package here, you know, waiting from the last time. The fact the receipt's in here. This is ridiculous. Um, I happened to see the receipt when it went by right there. Let's see what the date on the receipt is. This is going to be embarrassing. Should have a date. There's a little letter. Let's just say something handwritten on it. Dear Brian, you are nuts. Um... Two thousand eighteen. Two thousand and eighteen. Wow. That I ordered these and they're still in here. Getting ready to use a set now though. So, you know, it was no big deal. I've used one set. I bought three and I used one, so Okay, so what we're gonna do today, having talked about all this string stuff, um 
I, I don't think strings are all that big of a deal. To me, the strings are more of a personal thing. I like the way they feel under my fingers. I like the way they don't squeak. Um, and as long as they sound reasonably good, and to me, in my humble opinion, the guitar needs to sound good with any string you put on it. It's going to sound better with some strings, yes. It's going to have a, it's going to bring out a little bit more of the sparkle or a little bit more of the flavor you want. But strings by themselves are not going to take a non-scalloped braced guitar over to a fully scalloped braced guitar. So if you have a stock 1973 D28, it is not going to sound like a modified D28 just because you put strings on it. Those are... Strings are a flavor at best, you know. But you can prove me wrong here. So what we're going to do here is a little test here. And a comparison. I've got the shops new. <laughs> I, I, I hope it's on permanent, not permanent loan. I hope it's on long-term loan, okay. I, I bought it from the customer and I made him a deal where I would sell it back to him at any time for price I paid for it. Because I really like the 73D28. This is what I want a 70s D28 to stand like. Not like I've had others sound this good too, but this one just has a wonderful neck on it for me. So it's super, super, super comfortable for me to play. Um, and this just is boom. This is the model of what I want to shop 70s D28 to sound like. I've had others come through. I thought, man, this is, you know, but this one's sitting here in my hands. Here it is. So it has. Did there go. EJ 17s on it right now. They've been on it for a little while, but they haven't been played that much. The only the only playing I really do on this guitar is when I'm doing the videos. Um, so they're relatively fresh strings. But what you will notice with non-coated strings is you can put fresh strings on it, never touch them, put it in the case, bring it out a month later, and they're tarnished. So they're dead, you know, because the tarnish causes problems. So this is, that's what we have here, okay? They're not brand new, fresh, sparkly out of the box, UJ-17s. And why don't they rest in the box, you know? Well, they do long enough, but they're in a um, corrosion-resistant thing. And let's face it, you know, you do play the strings a little bit. You get some corrosion on there. There's um, moisture in the case, you know. There's things like that that are going to cause the corrosion to happen. So... These strings are in pretty good shape. I feel comfortable enough comparing them. But I don't want to change them because I don't like playing them because they're, they're sticky on me. And you can hear that. It's pretty obvious, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to change these strings, the EJ-17s, and we're going to try a couple sets here. We've got some string joy provided by a customer. I'm supposed to put them on his guitar. Uh, he sent me three sets. We're going to sacrifice one to the cause here. <laughs> and I'm going to check them out. String joy Foxwoods. And this is a custom gauge that he had built, which is a 13, 17, 24, 32, 42, 56. That's my gauge right there. So we're going to pop these on that guitar. And we're going to play them. And we're going to do an immediate... Reaction. What do I think of them? How do they feel it in my fingers? What do they sound like? They're going to be brand new. They're going to be fresh. Too bad. Next string we're going to put on there is the Diodario XS, which I have not tried. Um, I'm not really going to run them on customers' guitars. I just bought these because I was putting an order in, and I thought, you know, I should try these, see how they are. Now, these are going to be full mediums. Yeah. These are going to be full mediums. Hmm. We're still going to put them on there. Uh, the sound may be a little bit more in the A and the in the D, but we're going to see how they feel out of my fingers. So, 17s. I don't think I ordered singles on those. I may have. I've got a bunch of singles down there. I may have ordered singles. So, let me check. Um, I'll correct myself later on if I actually have the singles, because I know I ordered some singles. So they're down there. And then we're going to have the um, Elixir. Foster Bronze Nano Webs in my custom gauge. This is again is the HD set with a 056. These are going to be the last ones. I think I think I do the XS first. 
because there's deer there is on there already, so we're gonna go deer there, there, deer, deer there, there, there. <laughs> and then we're gonna do the stranger race, and I'm gonna remind you of these, and then we're gonna do the elixirs, and this is gonna be a string changing session deluxe. Well, I'm willing to do this for you. So, all right, so we're gonna play this guitar a little bit first. I'm not gonna play everything on it. I'm just gonna play one or two standard licks and then, then we're gonna go on, okay? So let's see. Let me think about what I'm gonna do here. I need a lick kind of combined with everything. So I'll play a little bit of rhythm and then I'll play a basic um, fireball male G run sort of thing. If you hear music in the background, I catch a bass every now and then. There's a band playing downtown in the square. And it's coming up this far. So, here we go. immediate impressions of the exiles I gotta go ahead and get into the light because my shop light burned out just as we were doing this so I don't have a very good light on me here so I gotta get into the light anyway my impression of the excess is it right uh, brand new they're uh, jangly yeah they're loud and jangly um, <laughs> loud noise I noticed it when I was stringing them up, I rubbed my finger down, accidentally. Golly. They're noisy. They feel all right though, you know, they don't feel too grabby. And these are true medium sets. I did have singles to bring this down to the right gauge. So, 
Okay, let's take a look at the next ones. Well, we've already done it on the video. I'll talk about the next ones. My impression, real quick, of the string joys, um, they're a little warmer sounding, sound a little bit warmer to me than the uh, Diodario XS. They're still pretty noisy. They don't feel coated, you know, they're definitely, uh, whatever coating he has on there is really super light. They feel good under the fingers though. They feel a little bit, uh, a little bit better. I don't know, maybe a little looser, a little slinkier um, than the Diodarios did. for the pull-offs right there you know you know, that's why I didn't like um polyweb I look at polywebs they were too slick I couldn't do pull-offs you do need a little bit of grip you know Good. They feel good under the under the. A little bit of string noise, but I don't think they're bad as the the XS. You know, you can tell me what you think, what you hear, what you hear here is sometimes different from what I'm hearing. Um, I want to be able to hold on to the string, you know, if I ever do that. I don't do that in bluegrass much, but you know. I lost it there. Okay, these are the nano web phosphor bronze and these are the strings that I'm used to so I'm probably biased a little bit towards them um, they feel like the stiffest of these strings which I kind of like uh, because I'm using a you know a lighter on the middle strings so I kind of like that little bit of extra pickup on the stiffness uh, maybe that's my imagination because I bet when you ran them when you look at the that's the branches scraping on the thing the winds blowing I thought for first time I heard that I thought I had a raven in here. So, um, but these feel like what I'm used to. I think that's by far the quietest string. <laughs> you know, uh, they certainly they just they feel like what I'm used to. Strings fingers go pretty easy. Pull offs are nice. <laughs> They're as jangly as some of the other strings. Uh, you know, everybody's new out here. These strings are going to sound like this in a month. I feel like um, I'm hearing the guitar more than I'm hearing the string. Uh, with some of the other ones, especially the Diderio XS, I felt like I was hearing so much of the string noise, so much brightness and stuff from the string that I wasn't hearing the guitar as much. And with these uh, nano webs, I feel like I'm hearing the guitar. You might say they're dead, you know, but they're going to be like that for a long, long time. Um, so maybe like, you know, dead strings means you hear the sound of the guitar a little bit. of the string scraping on the fret because you know st string noise here equates to noise on the fret too I hear I think I'm hearing a little bit less of that um, 
These are still my favorites. These are my favorites. I think the String Joys, the String Joys were probably my second favorite. I like them. I like the, um, I like the warmth that they had. Um, I respect the fact that they're a small company too, you know. So, you know, I would definitely um, give them a shot if you like them. They did their XS, maybe my least favorite right now, but let them break in for a month or a couple of weeks and, you know, let's come back to them again to see what happens. Probably what I'm going to do now is put put all of these strings on this guitar and run them for a month or so and see what I think about them long term. But I can already tell you I like the elixirs. Um, you know, again, it's, it's what I'm used to. They look good. They definitely have the most, uh, they look good. What I mean by they look good is they're not sparkling at me. Sometimes that can really cause you trouble when you're on stage and look down and you see your strings all sparkling from the lights and things and it can really mess up your fret dots. You see, it's happened to me at Winfield, on stage at Winfield, uh, you know, using elixirs, but the light was so bright that the strings would sparkle and you'd miss your fret dots and stuff, which isn't too bad on this guitar. I can see them pretty good, but um, one of my proofs, it has maple binding with um, flaming on it, and the dots are kind of hard to see on that. And, but, so when I say it looks good, this is, I'm looking down there and I'm not getting a glare of the string like I was with the uh, Diderios. Now, the uh, string joys were completely opposite. They were very dull looking string. They were easy to look at. Um, they didn't distract me. You know, I could see, you know, everything like that. Strings didn't distract me. You know, it's a very subtle thing, and if you don't look at your strings, it's not going to be a problem. But... So... Also, when I do hybrid picking, you know, the elixirs are kind of nice on my fingers. Um, Non-coated non strings will really rip my calluses up. Uh, I know it's an electric guitar, but I don't use coated strings. I use non-coated, and man, it'll it'll rip my my fingers up over here. Let me know what you think about this. You know, if you had a favorite and if there's one string that for you just really spoke out, stood out, if there was one that you just thought, man, that just killed the guitar, you know, it might be the elixirs. It might kill it for you. You might like all that little jangle and stuff that I don't particularly care for. Um, so let's share your comments on that. But there's a fun little string test for you. And it's getting dark and I'm going to get out of here before the bears get me between here and the house. We have bears here. They come and if you don't lock the doors in your truck, uh, the bears will get in there and they'll open the door and they get in, they will trash your vehicle. I haven't had them trash my vehicle, but I've had them get in there and get um, anything out. You know, obviously you don't leave food in there, but they'll get in there and get uh, anything. I've heard stories of the bears getting in where people use hairspray or something and it's fruit scented and bears will rip the seat covers up and um, anyway, we've had bears here, and there's elk in the backyard. The bull elk, are, the elk are starts just starting to get into the rut, and there was a big bull elk, like right there, a couple of nights ago, um, starting to herd cows around a little bit. I didn't hear him bugle, but he was definitely starting to look that way, you know. So I'm not going to get eaten by anything, but it's getting dark, and you know I'm going to head on over there. So let me know what you think. <laughs>